Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, Apple IT Trends for 2023. Thanks for joining us. As we wait for everyone to get signed in, we'll go over a few housekeeping items. Please think of any questions you have throughout the webinar and direct them to the Q&A section. We'll be answering them throughout and at the end of the webinar. This webinar will be recorded and we'll share the recording with you shortly after. If we don't get to all of your questions, we'll be sure to follow up with you after. You can also reach out to info at jamf.com to get in contact with someone at Jamf. My name is Veronica Batista on our product marketing team, and I'll be taking you through today's presentation on Apple IT trends for 2023. A quick agenda, we plan to recap Apple's IT accomplishments in 2022 and move into Jamf's CEO, Dean Hager's predictions for 2023. We'll close out by talking through some IT initiatives to consider based on these predictions and how to implement them. So let's start with our recap. Coincidentally, the predictions we had for this year actually came to fruition. We talked about what was driving Apple, including hybrid and remote work, attracting and retaining top talent, and the power of the M1 chip. We also believed hybrid and remote work would redefine how IT empowered their end users with access to corporate resources, with a focus on security and employee productivity. Because of the increased activity from hackers and bad actors, security is top of mind in a remote world, and a zero trust security approach helped organizations this year be better positioned to deal with data breaches. On the topic of security, we covered the line between privacy and security. Apple has been known to take consumer privacy seriously, and it should be the same for employee privacy. Remote and hybrid work created a need for better solutions for both BYOD and corporate owned devices that address security threats while keeping private lives just that, private. Lastly, we know it's been a very difficult few years for educators. Many schools were unprepared when the pandemic first hit to provide access to remote or device-based learning to their students. And many teachers had few tools and little training on how to do so. Those who already had one-to-one -one iPad programs in place fared far better than those who didn't. And it's driving many school districts to increase their adoption of iPads in the classroom. The pace at which schools needed to address remote learning created more challenges including making sure those devices are properly used at home with strong filtering and security solutions. Plus, making sure students who need to stay home uh, due to quarantine feel included while they're learning at home during that time. Now let's talk about what we think we'll see in 2023. To no surprise, we predict a lot of similar trends for next year. Apple will continue to grow its market share. Remote work isn't going anywhere. And the balance between privacy and security will remain top of mind. All that said, there are benefits within those trends that can help organizations save money. And within the education industry, we hope to see Apple technology go beyond remote learning. We'll continue to see adoption of one-to-one -one technology programs, and we hope to see more and more governments stepping in to help their school districts implement Apple programs. Now there are three things from this year that indicate that Apple will continue to perform throughout 2023. The first is that iOS market share is growing. Nine to five Mac reports that in the second quarter of this year, Apple represented 57% of smartphone sales and iOS overtook Android market share for the first time in the US. So the US market is starting to lean more heavily into iPhone. And we'll talk more about how this affects the employees at an organization. The next is Mac shipments are steadily growing. And in the third quarter of this year, according to IDC, we saw Mac shipments as a percentage share of total desktop shipments hit double digits for the first time at 13.5% up from 8.2% in the same quarter of last year. So more people are going with Mac as their desktop of choice. Lastly, since the percentage share of Mac is up, in that same IDC report, we saw a decline across three major manufacturers of PC 
in Q3 of this year as compared to last year, down 4.8% collectively and down 15% across all PC manufacturers. We expect these trends to continue. And as more consumers are choosing Mac, that means that it's likely the preferred desktop for work as well, no matter where they're working from. On that note, let's talk more about remote work. Just because people can come back to the office doesn't mean that they are coming back to the office. For two years now, many organizations have worked really effectively with remote employees. So the argument that we all have to be together in an office to be productive doesn't necessarily have the credibility anymore. In fact, colleagues I've talked to prefer working at home because being in the office is a distraction, and I agree. I personally get less work done when I'm in the office, and I've been a remote employee with Jamf for over seven years now. Leaning into remote work offers a lot of different benefits. The first is not being limited to a talent pool that only exists where your offices exist. Remote work has empowered so many organizations to hire the best talent, regardless of where they're based. Extremely important as the job market becomes increasingly more competitive. Not only that, but remote meetings have arguably been more productive than in-person meetings. The reality is a meeting starts when that Zoom room opens and everyone is there. There's very little small talk happening, which makes the time spent together more efficient. Another reality is being able to take a meeting from anywhere means less rescheduling. So if my flight is delayed, I can still take that meeting from the airport and be involved in the decisions being made without having to reschedule based on everyone's availability. The other thing to consider is your facilities maintenance, especially for growing companies. Prior to the pandemic, it was difficult for a growing organization to expand their facilities fast enough to house the employees they were bringing on board. With remote work, this is not a challenge anymore because you have more employees opting to work from home. And this speaks to the last benefit we're highlighting, which is reducing costs. Less money spent on your facilities, as well as the travel costs to bring those employees into the office to have those in-person meetings. So remote work is happening, it's not going anywhere, and there are many benefits to leaning into this trend, including keeping your employees happy by offering a good work-life balance, because the two to three hours they used to spend traveling into the office, they're now able to spend at home with their families and pets, which in turn makes them more productive while they're at work. Now, this may pose a challenge to some organizations because the corporate resources that used to be protected behind the office firewalls are now out in the world. And we're trying to figure out ways to keep that data safe. Which moves us into our next trend, privacy versus security. And there's a few different ways to examine this, but let's first look at it from a leadership perspective. Jam CEO Dean Hager wrote in his thesis paper many years ago, that leaders need to learn to lead to outcomes, not observations. Outcomes are generally objective, right? Hitting a sales number, releasing a new product, producing a new piece of content, versus an observation which can be walking by someone's desk and seeing them read a newspaper, which may make you assume that this employee is wasting time and not being productive. Leading to observations will eventually backfire on organizations through things like class action lawsuits because of the encroachment on employee privacy. Through remote work, many organizations are looking for tools that creep or spy on employees to track a way to quantify productivity like how many emails are you sending or how active are these folks on Slack rather than looking at their outcomes, right? How many sales? how much content, etc., which is, in the end, what really matters. Now, if we look at it from a technology and corporate resources perspective, there's a few questions to ask yourself. Will your employees carry their work phones with them 24-7? The answer is probably not. Will your employees carry their personal phones with them 24-7? That is a mo most likely yes. Is it possible that a work situation would come up when an employee doesn't have their work phone with them? Very likely. Now, considering these things, we would want to enable our end users to get work done when and where they need to, 
because in many cases, they're going to find a way to get it done anyway. Sometimes for them, that means circumventing policies or securities put in place by using things like WhatsApp or personal emails to communicate with customers or partners if their work devices are so locked down that working isn't easy for them. As organizations think through problems like this, they need to provide a solution that works for both IT and work policies and securities. Finding IT empowerment solutions rather than lockdown solutions make your organizations more secure while making your end users more productive and provides a better user experience. All that said, the reality is times are difficult and budgets are tight. 2022 is ending with multiple tech layoffs, continued inflation, and signs of a recession. But leaning into remote work and focusing on empowering your employees can help your organization save money in ways you may not realize. We talked a little bit about why going back to the office is expensive, including travel costs and facilities expansion for growing organizations. When you focus on empowering your employee with the right technology, you provide a great end user experience and motivate your employees to get work done. Not only that, you create more efficiencies for them and foster better collaboration across your organization when employees have access to all the right tools to communicate and collaborate without everyone being in the same space. With the right technology, you also create a culture of self-sufficiency as we all continue to work from home. Since we may not have access to an IT department in person, we learn to find solutions to our problems on our own all while keeping corporate resources safe with the right security tools and policies in place. Now let's talk about some specific education industry trends we predict for 2023. First, let's cover off on some of the benefits or learns we had from the pandemic. First, understanding that under-resourced kids didn't have access to the technology they needed to learn from home. So being able to implement one-to-one iPad programs and empower those kids with technology they could take home would provide immense value to them. Second is exposure to this technology helped some teachers who may have been a little hesitant to bring technology in their classrooms now understand the value that technology brings to their teaching journey, being able to impact more kids more efficiently. And technology provided more than just remote learning. It enabled active learning with iPads, allowing for a personalized education done on a mass scale without having a one-to-one teacher to student ratio. Technology is allowing for live self-correction so students can move through their learning journey without one-to-one attention from a teacher for every step, giving that teacher more reach, plus a lot more attention from students because of the ability to manipulate the iPads in the classroom with the touch of a button. So embracing technology and providing iPads in the classroom allows for quality learning without disruption. And it's important to keep students safe with the right management and security tools. We're also seeing some governments helping school districts embrace the tech by stepping in to provide the technology so those school districts don't have to compromise due to budget. For example, the Ministry of Education in Taiwan wanted to offer students world-class digital classrooms and worked with Apple and Jamf to deploy 400,000 iPads across Taiwan. So now let's talk about some of the initiatives that we can embrace as we consider some of the trends we can expect for Apple and IT in 2023. Based on the trends we expect for 2023, here are some initiatives you can consider implementing at your organization starting with an employee choice program to empower end users to be their most productive selves while working remotely with the technology they prefer. Consider ways to improve the employee experience. Most importantly, the onboarding experience as we start to hire employees that don't have access to an office or an in-person IT team. If our employees plan to use their personal devices for work anyway, Leverage a BYOD program to help keep corporate resources secure while respecting the privacy of your end users. And for those of you in education, consider weighing the benefits of a one-to-one iPad program at your school or school district. 
For employee choice, you can find tons of resources on jamf.com, but here are three of our most recent content and publications that can help you make the case for an employee choice program at your organization. You can scan the QR code or use the links provided in the chat. The first is a global study which found that almost nine out of 10 respondents surveyed said choosing their work device was of importance to them and they'd even be willing to sacrifice part of their salary to be empowered to choose their technology. The second is a blog post highlighting some examples of customers who implemented a choice program and the benefits they've seen so far. And the last is a Forbes blog by Jam CEO Dean Hager covering the three main reasons organizations should consider an employee choice program. When it comes to the employee experience, Onboarding is really one of the most important concepts to make employees feel ready and empowered to work. Here's a recent webinar on this very topic, which covers how to enable efficient technology onboarding workflows that center the user experience and develop a seamless offboarding process that reduces risks to your organization. A BYOD program can help you get ahead of employees trying to circumvent any security policies to try and get work done how they prefer to get it done. These resources help you understand how you can stick to those policies while empowering your workforce with their personal devices. And lastly, hear directly from some Jamf Education customers on how they implemented a successful one-to-one -one iPad program in their schools. A quick recap, we talked about the accomplishments Apple IT had in 2022, including the rise of Apple with iOS market share increasing, Mac shipments hitting double digits, and PC shipments in decline. The continuation of remote work post-pandemic, and the battle between privacy and security, and the crucial role iPads played in the education industry. And the predictions of 2023 are much of the same. Right? We expect to see Apple continue to rise in market share, Remote work isn't really going anywhere, and leaning into it can offer many benefits. With the new way of working, IT will have to continue to secure those corporate resources while respecting employee privacy. All this with the lens of empowering our end user to be productive and saving money along the way as we prepare for a possible recession. In education, we expect to see the continued rise of adoption in one-to-one -one technology programs and are hopeful governments around the world will step in to provide that technology and offer best-in-class digital classrooms. We've included some resources on some initiatives that can help, including implementing an employee choice program, providing a best-in-class onboarding experience, leveraging a BYOD program, and implementing a one-to-one -one iPad program in school. Thanks so much for listening. You'll receive an email with the recording of this webinar when it's ready. If you'd like to get in touch with our team to discuss our management or security solutions, you can scan the QR code on the screen. And if you have any additional questions, please email info at jamf.com for help.